I got at least another 20 years left in me, you know. Then I'll retire into the sunset. They always make fun of me because I always say, uh, so what are you going to do when you die? Well, I'm hoping they uh, cremate me and put my ashes here into the pit, throw me out into the wind. I was a real quiet person, you know, and this opened me up to not be afraid of society. I was kind of like a recluse, you know. Started working here, like I said, I started in the sausage, which is kind of like you're, you're quiet and you just mind, you put your sausage on the block, you go back and get some more, heat up some more. Then when you start slicing and people come from other places and you start talking to them, and it makes you feel good. You know, then I started opening it up more and more and more. I always wanted to be famous like Elvis. Not, not as big as him, but just to have something like that. You know, it's, man, someday I want to sign autographs. Someday I want to be on TV, you know. I want to have something like that. So, you know, I never thought it was going to happen. So, so like I said, I'm shy, so how is that going to happen? I'm, but then I'm thinking, Elvis was the same way. You know, he was a shy person, real quiet. And they're looking, he was on the biggest stage of all. So as I got started working here, more and more, he kind of took that shyness away, you know. People come in here and talk to you, and you have to say something. One of the old barbecue maxims was that never eat brisket from the right side of a cow, because cows are right hoofed, and they, and they always push off with their right hoof. And so the, the right side of their decal and, and pecs are, are going to be stronger and tenser and therefore tougher than the left side. I don't know. How do you know cows right hoofed or left hoofed? That's just ridiculous to me. Barbecue is a way of life. It, culture really is how people live in, in a certain community, right? And barbecue in Texas is, is, is an entrenchment. It's, it's a part of your, your life experience. It's, you experience it from a grilling perspective in your own backyard. That's your first introduction to it, usually. Uh, next is you'll probably come into an establishment, something like this, when you have your first real barbecue meal, a slow-cooked meal. It's kind of like a church, in a way. People are, are Methodist, or they're Baptist, or they're Catholic, or they're Jewish. Well, people are Louis Millers, or they're Kreitzes, or they're Franklins. I mean, they have their favorites as well. They're, they're temples that they go worship at. And barbecue is very much that, that way. There's a certain belief in, in a certain spirituality, a certain path to salvation. I think for us, I think there's a certain path to salvation in, in the way of, of creating this black gold that we call barbecue. And I believe in our process, and I believe in our methodologies, and I believe in our, in our spices, and that all in conjunction that this can create something that's just really mag simple yet magnificent. It's, it's, it's amazing how, in, how entailed and how in depth people really throw themselves into what it is that we do. In some ways, they've created this cult of personality, right, for, for the people who do this. But I'll tell you, in, in all honesty, there's, what we do is difficult, it's hard. Um, but we love what we do, otherwise we wouldn't do it. We opened Davis Grocery Barbecue. It's Davis Grocery and Market across the street in that old building over there. It came as a vision from God. I saw it in a vision and I took God at his word and I went on and opened that old store. And after I opened it, I saw the same vision, but from the reverse angle, which was my confirmation to know that that was what God wanted me to do. Um, I'm a minister of God, uh, former pastor, and I know that I'm planted here because this is where God wants me to be, um, to minister to people. This is kind of like my pulpit here. Everybody's trying to find their own niche, not trying to get rich, but you have to acquire a taste for the food being cooked over a certain type of wood, and you have to have a a passion for for putting out good a good product every day. You can sit down over a meal and, and you can discuss any kind of differences that people have, any kind of problems that people have. And, and so for me as a, a Baptist preacher, 
I feed the people physically and nutritionally with the barbecue. But in the meantime as well, if they have a problem, I can feed them spiritually with the Word of God. So you get a double portion. <laughs> I was in the high-tech industry there for see, about 20 years. And here around this area, it, uh, it busted. The way I met Vinsel was through my neighbor, uh, Jim Downs, and uh, his daughter was getting married. So he wanted Vinsel to be at the wedding. So he told Vinsel, I'm gonna get this, my neighbor's gonna come in here and he's gonna kick, cook the ribeyes for me. Vinsel was looking for somebody. So I said, well, you know, I'll give it a shot. So me and Vinsel worked it out and there ever since that, when we've been a team. I just turned 21 when I got back from the service. So I stayed, I volunteered at 16 years old in the service, come back in 21. Then I work in meat market, then I decided to have my own business for myself. And I saved all of my money, army money, that I sent it home. And I took that money and invested in, in the food business. You know, it's actually an honor to actually step in a man's footsteps, you know. And you know, we, we, we always sit and talk, hey man, this is what we're gonna do. You know, this is how I'm gonna do it. You know, what do you think? Well, you know what, I really don't want you. I said, okay, well fine. And then he'll come to me, I said, well, you know, I think we need to stick this way. He said, you know what, Scott? Yeah, let, let's go ahead and do it. We've been doing it for so long this way. You know, why change, why change a good thing, you know? No need to reinvent the wheel. You can't put two bulls in a pen because, you know, butt heads, you know? So, you know, sometimes, you know, one of us has to back away, but it's all, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll still sit down and drink a beer together and stuff. So, like I said, there's, when, when we go home, there's no hard feelings. Back in the early days, the African-American people could not use the restroom. They couldn't drink out of the same water fountain. Uh, they, like in this, Black's Barbecue, originally back in the early 30s, they sat on one side of the room away from all of the other people. And uh, they'd have to wait to be served when everybody else was served. And we just felt like this was not right. We had a sign up said for colored only. And uh, my husband and I talked about it, and we said we didn't like that. So we took it down, and we let them, you know, as the story goes, people ask us, well, where are they going to sit? And my husband says, any word they want to. And uh, they said, well, we won't come back into your place of business. And we said, well, that's just the way we feel. They feel like they should have the, the uh, opportunity to sit where they want to and be waited on just like everyone else. None of our recipes are written down. It's all passed down uh, word of mouth. And by, uh, by getting in the pits and learning, and uh, fortunately I've been able to, to learn from my dad and my mom. Uh, and then I've been able to uh, pass that on to my kids. And uh, because uh, we, we still cook the same way we did back in the 1930s. And so if you had been here in the 30s uh, or early 40s, uh, that, when you come in today, you get that same flavor profile here. And so we're trying, we feel like we're trying to preserve an old style of cooking that has pretty much disappeared from the United States. So uh, it's not just a business, but we feel like we're doing our part to uh, keep this, this method of cooking alive uh, for future generations. I lived a spoiled life as a kid, getting to play on the water. Uh, and then of course 9-11 happened. One of the Marine Corps, I was already kind of going in before, changed my job so I could do more things involved in the war. Um, did three deployments, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and back in Iraq again. Uh, got involved in special forces in a support group. Um, saw the world, experienced everything. I lived in a war where I learned black and white really fast, and I've taken that and kind of basically just turned my life into living that same way, taking things in stride, being honest, um, being fair, patient, um, 
understanding, inspiring. Uh, that's something that I've strived to do. Take my experiences that I've learned, see all the things that I've learned, whether it was in the world, the war, uh, different states, jobs, bring it back to the small town place in my life and influence those around me. Because I know that if I can do that and I can inspire them to do the same thing, that we slowly branch out, we slowly make change. I want this to continue to be there. I want families to be able to say, yes, I went there as a kid and I'm taking my kids there and they're gonna take their kids there because those are all the things that you remember. I mean, I can tell you every, whether it's an actor or whether it's an athlete or whether it's regular Joe Blow, that comes through those doors, everything else disappears. When you walk through those doors and you get me and you sit down and you're with your friends and family, everything else goes away for that short period of time when you eat, life has disappeared. Texan is more of an attitude, it's more of a state of mind, and barbecue really, I think, in embodies that. It's hard work, it's an honest day's work, you're putting out the, the best quality product that you can, and you're giving it everything you have, B before sunup to after sundown. It's, you know, this is a way of life, that's the culture. And I think the Texas way is, you know, you put in a hard day's work. You expect, you know, to do your share, to carry your portion of the load and, you know, not take a free ride that, you know, to get through, you have, you've got to push through. It brings us all together. And so those are the things, those are the things that we hold dearest. I mean, is the fact that our family, you know, we say barbecue, but that's family. I mean, that's what that means. And for someone who's not from here may kind of, that's kind of weird put religion, politics, and barbecue up there, but barbecue's family. I mean, and everyone knows that, and everyone's gonna argue that. When they think barbecue, they think Sunday afternoon with their family out in the backyard barbecue. That's what brings that, just that idea to life. So what are you gonna do when you die? Well, I'm hoping they uh, cremate me and put my ashes here into the pit. Throw me out into the wind.